Hi, Jeffrey here. In this video, I'm drawing Kang the Conqueror, played by Jonathan Majors. This drawing is based on his appearance in the film Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. Like all drawings I do of people, I start by drawing the face. The face is the hardest part to get right, so I want to make sure I get that right first. I draw outlines of the major features such as the eyes, nose, mouth, and large wrinkles such as on the forehead. Once I've completed outlining the face, I start by coloring in the eyes. The eyes are the hardest part of the face to get right, so if I mess up, I can start over without wasting too much time. Specifically, I color in the pupils first. Then after the pupils, I follow that up by coloring in the iris and then the sclera. I color in the darkest parts first. The reason being is because those areas will determine whether the eyes look correct or not. For the eyes in this drawing, I'm using black, violet blues, and dark blues for the darker colors. And then for the lighter colors, I'm using white, light blues, light purples, and grays. After I've drawn the eyes, I draw the wrinkles around the eyes and move up to the eyebrows. The difficult part about this is because the eyebrows and eyes don't have much separation in terms of line work between them. In addition, the eyebrows don't look much different in terms of line work from the wrinkles and pores of skin beneath. So what I do is I draw each individual hair of the eyebrows and then shade in using the proper colors to get the shading right around that. Now the lights and shadows in his right eye are darker than the lights and shadows in his left eye. That makes the right eye harder to draw in terms of separation between eyebrow and eye and showing the shading. So for that portion, I tend to be more subtle in terms of how I shade, whereas the left eye naturally has more contrast, so it's easier to distinguish between them. The next most difficult portion of the face to draw is the nose, which is the portion I draw next. That portion has a lot of light colors, so in order to shade that, what I have to do is first use a white pencil to make so that the next colors that I use will shade in lighter, because the white serves as a backdrop, lightening up the other colors when I mix them. The next portion I draw is the mouth, and that portion has some light colors as well, but also the lower lip has darker portions. So I shade that in using the darker colors and then shade in the lighter colors on top, and then kind of blend them together in the middle, with a separation being black. I then draw in the portion between his nose and mouth. Similar to the eyes, this portion is light on one side and dark on the other because of the lighting. Now as I'm drawing his skin, I'm trying to capture every pore and wrinkle I can. To do this, I first color in a base coat so that the other colors on top will mix according to the base color that I use. I then mix in other colors based on the subtle changes in light and shadows on the skin. Finally, I draw in the lines for the pores. After drawing all those layers, the skin still doesn't look blended together. So after that, I use a few more colors and blend in overall so that the skin looks more uniform. Now obviously this is a very time consuming process, but it's the process that I'm comfortable with and that I feel will add as much detail as possible. So I'm currently drawing the chin. This portion has transitions from light to dark that also include the hair for his beard. To draw his beard, I'll dot in each individual hair that sticks out. Now as you notice on his face, there are a lot of different colors. This is because the photo I was using as a reference image had a lot of different lights on his face and that's one of the things that makes drawing a face harder is if there's lots of different colors on it. In addition, the changes in color are very subtle so I have to constantly both look at the micro and the macro. What I mean by this is that for the micro I zoom in on the reference image on my computer and shade based on as detailed as possible as I can see. But then on the macro level I have to zoom out and look at the overall face and make sure the subtle colors are all blended together more uniformly. It's important to do both. Sometimes I tend to only focus on the micro, but then if you do that, the overall face doesn't look uniform. So here I am continuing to shade in the beard. The colors change very subtly throughout this portion. For example, near the bottom, the beard hairs appear black, but as you move up, they become dark blue, purplish blue, and then sort of a light blue. As I move up, I'm also starting to shade in his ear as well. The ear has many folds. These folds create various shadows. As you can also see, there are a ton of different colors throughout the ear. The colors range from pink to 
black to blue and gray. And from there, I start to draw the hair on the top of his head. The line work is very dense here. I start by finding a reference point to draw, and from there, slowly branch out. It's impossible to draw every hair exactly as the photo shows. So what I do is draw the hair as exact as I can on the edges, because those are easier to see. And then for the hairs that are more within, I do more of an approximation. I look at the reference image and try to find where I am in the drawing and do a rough approximation of how the hair looks like and the pattern. But this portion is not have to be exact because like I mentioned, that's impossible. So you just have to make it look similar enough to the photo and that works. Now I'll be honest, there were times when I was drawing this that I felt like giving up. I just felt overwhelmed by the complexity of all the details. But I decided to break it down into small shapes and tackle each one one at a time. Each wrinkle, each pore, each strand of hair. As I continued to draw the hair, I realized that I wasn't paying as much attention to the macro level as I should be. So I paused more between switching pencils and looked at the overall photo compared to my overall drawing and started to look at the overall shading, you know, looking at where areas are largely darker, where areas are largely brighter, and start to shade in not just individual hairs, but the overall drawing as well. The last part that I draw is his forehead, and he has these scars, as you have seen, running from the top of his face to the bottom, and those require subtle differences in shading and color than the rest of his face, so that they distinguish from the rest of his face. There are also the large wrinkles on the top of his forehead, and for that I draw in the lines and then slowly erase them after I've drawn in the graphite pencil lines, and then shade in with the normal pen the colored pencils. And then once I've completed that, I have completed drawing his face. The next part that I draw is his neck. The tricky part about drawing this part is that a lot of his neck is covered in really dark shadows, but the shadows still distinguish subtle differences in darkness. So I look carefully at the reference image for the subtle differences in the shading. And then also there are parts of the neck which are a little lighter and those areas make it so that the hairs and pores of his skin are more visible, so then I draw those as well. The next part that I work on is the part that takes up the majority of the drawing, and that is drawing his armor. His armor is very reflective and shiny, so I make sure to capture that the light reflecting off the surface and how it moves gradually across the surfaces. I use mostly several types of blues ranging from light blues to dark blues and occasionally a violet blue and a little bit of purple as well and then of course using black where it's very dark and the shadows cover the armor completely. This part here was tricky because there's a lot of lines very close together so it's hard to distinguish between each of them but I just slowed down and took my time and made sure I drew each line correctly. I also made sure to adjust the thickness of the lines as required based on the reference image. This part again is very reflective, so I make sure to slowly transition to the lighter colors and then back to the darker colors. And this part once again has a lot of lines close to each other, so I make sure the lines don't overlap each other. And here the armor transitions into more of a textured pattern, which is more green than blue. There I have to make sure that I draw the lines correctly and that I don't lose sight of the pattern even though the light is very bright so it's hard to see. But it also gets very dark at times so that makes it also hard to see as well. And the lines slowly form these type of hexagon shapes. I shade in the hexagons using a combination of greens and blues. And I basically repeat this until I get to the end of the left side of his shoulder. From there I move back to the center and start drawing this center chest piece. Now, this piece has a range of blues because of how the light reflects off of the surface. So I shade in the lighter areas and then shade in the darker areas and 
slowly blend them together to form the pattern from the light. And then I start to draw the right side. The right side is a lot darker than the left side. So I have to use black and mix black with a lot of the colors that I'm using, like the blues and purples. What's interesting to note is that where the armor is darkest is black, of course, but is also a mix of purple and some navy blue. And then there's a transition to ultramarine and then to light blue. Here I am drawing the end of the right side of his shoulder. Again, there's the hexagon pattern, like that was on the left side. This side is darker and also the colors are more varied, so I'm using a lot of, not as much green, but still some, and then more black and blue. And then yeah, I've completed this drawing. So then after I complete the drawing, of course, I write my signature and the date that I completed it. If you've seen my previous commentary drawing videos, then you'll know that for my signature, I always first draw it in with graphite pencil, so to make sure I have the signature right, and then fill it in using a black pencil. And then here's a look at the completed drawing, kind of zooming it in and panning around to show the details. I hope you all enjoyed this commentary. If you enjoy the content that I make, make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Thank you so much for all of your support. It truly means a lot to me, and I'm extremely grateful for it. And I will see you all in the next drawing.